It's a gloomy day here, Sunday, October 6th. Milton is heading our way. I'm on the East Coast, so I'm not feeling too scared about it, but my heart is going out to everyone who's about to get pounded. I'm gonna make the most of a gloomy day that I can't really do much outside. I did pop out here and plant some more seeds. Well, let me start by saying I had some raggedy sweet potato vines going here that have been going for over six months. So I really thought I'd have a pretty good haul and no, it turned out I should have left them another month or two, but the little white flies or aphids had moved in and I'd been fighting them and fighting them and they had really taken over the underneath side of the leaves on the sweet potatoes. So I said, ah, that's gotta go, I'm over it. So I planted some zucchini over here broccoli here and some cauliflower here and I might try cabbage on that end we'll see right now I don't have anything over there and let me show you my little tiny sweet potato haul that's it you guys in spite of all of those plants growing since January and I ran out and did errands this morning in between the rain and now I'm heading back inside, gonna make some fall food, because why not to go with my fall football? I know this doesn't seem very fallish, but I'm trying to use up some things in my freezer. These have been in there a long time. So I'm gonna cook some of those, and I'm gonna throw a flatbread pizza Raining. in the oven. Hurricane Milton is out there trying to come our way. So I wanted to get my little bit of errands taken care of this morning, and I'm so glad I did because it unexpectedly turned out to be my day for discounts. I went to Bell's, basically a home goods store, and I went in there specifically looking for olive oil. And if you saw my earlier video, you know, I bought olive oil on a BOGO at Publix, but that was only 32 ounces and, you know, not a very good quality. So I thought, out of all these stores, where might I be able to get a good deal on olive oil, quality olive oil? So I popped into Bell's. It was looking like I wasn't gonna have any luck. And then there at the bottom of a shelf, I saw these. Now these are, you know, from Italy. So you gotta appreciate that. And they're good until 2025 August and 25.4 ounces. So let's just call it 51 ounces total. Hiding, okay. $16 a bottle. And then I was almost out of curry seasoning and I snagged this for $4.99. And then I got up to the register and the clerk said, you have $5 in loyalty rewards. Do you want to use those? And I said, yes. And then she said, oh, did you recently have a birthday? And I said, yesterday. And she said, well, you get 20% off of everything. Do you want to use both? And of course I said, yes. So my price on these, the olive oil would have been 32. And let's just say, the discount came off of the olive oil, never mind the curry. So 32 minus 1140 is 2160 for 51 ounces of good quality olive oil. In today's world, that's a good deal. Yay, winning at Bell's. So my total ticket came to $25. There's no tax on food in Florida, so that's considered food. So winning. And then I went to the chlorine store and got four jugs of chlorine and that came to $40. And he said, you have $15 in rewards points. Do you want to use those? And of course I said, heck yeah. So woohoo, winning out there in St. Lucie West on the discounts today. All right, so the air fryer is gonna do its job over here. I don't know who invented air fryers. I'm gonna look that up because God bless them. Just like with AC, maybe not as fabulous as AC, but close, close. Well, I finally climbed up in the attic. 
it was my one goal for today. I got my wicker pumpkin out for above my bookshelf. I just love the funny little light glow. It kind of looks like grass or wheat sticking up there behind it in the light and the shadows. And then I rummaged this out. It was a DIY that I made. I like that it's kind of going with the little darker theme I've got going. Since I have the oven on for the flatbread anyway, I'm gonna chop up this butternut squash, one of the three I bought the other day, throw it on this sheet pan to roast, maybe not all of it, but I'm doing that for some fall salads to make for this coming week. Got a little good butternut squash. So bright orange and beautiful. Tis the season. Got a pan full of squash. That's plenty for three salads for work. There's lots of other stuff's going in there, of course. A bag of about one and a half cups of squash. I'm saving the seeds because, you know, Armageddon. I'm gonna throw some precious olive oil on these. And they go, and the pizza's gonna go in right beside them. Chicken bacon ranch flatbread with some oddly shaped chunks of chicken from Aldi the other day. Onto my fallish snacky lunch. Some of this fabulous hummus. It definitely has a chipotle vibe, but it's not spicy. Just has that sort of Southwest seasoning flavor. And I am definitely gonna get into this fall harvest salsa while it's still good. Some of my maple spice nuts. Some of these fall leaf tortillas from Trader Joe's. I don't know if olives are considered a fall dish. Maybe they're just year round, but I'm gonna have a couple. And even though these may be considered summery, I think they're kind of fallish in color, so I'm gonna have one of those. Got my bourbon chicken, which maybe I cooked a minute too long. Definitely fall color, definitely. And some toasted naan bread. And when my flatbread comes out of the oven, I'm going to have a piece of that. The Chiefs don't play until Monday night, so I'm going to sit here and watch Frugal Fit Mom and her son Andrew review pumpkin-flavored foods and enjoy my snacks. So the dreary weather continues thanks to Milton. I don't know if you can tell, but it's raining still all day. So I'm just trying to do a little chores, keep myself busy in between watching YouTube videos, my favorite pastime. Next project I'm up to is meal prepping because it is 3.30 on Sunday afternoon and I have to work this week. So here is my butternut squash that I've roasted. This is farro that I boiled and had in a bag in the freezer. For those who don't know, farro is in the wheat family. So it's kind of like a wheat berry meets oatmeal or barley. I don't know how else to describe it. I really like the texture in fall salads. So I'm gonna divide this butternut squash up between those three containers. I'm going to throw in some craisins, some pecans. I pulled out a couple of bags of Springer Mountain Farms pre-cooked chicken breast from my freezer. Really need to get these used up. Looking a little freezer burned there, but they'll be fine. So when those get thawed out, I'm gonna chop those up into bite-sized chunks. I'm also gonna chop up this cucumber and divide it between the three containers. So yeah, that's all going in the bottom because you know me, I like my upside down salads because when I get to work, I dump these Tupperwares into a really nice big porcelain bowl. Like a so that I keep at the office because you know, I'm bougie. And once I get all the goodies in the bottom, in between the rain, hopefully it lets up enough, I'm gonna go out here and chop up some kale from my garden. And then I'll be out of kale, but I think I'll have enough to do three salads. And then this is a maple vinaigrette that I made and delicious. So then I'll top it with either feta cheese or blue cheese crumbles at the office. And that'll feed me for three days this week. All right, I chopped up this much kale off of my plants out there. I can get some Swiss chard, but I want to start with the kale. 
I don't know that this will be enough for three salads by the time I get it off the stems. I may need to go out there and get some more, but I basically don't have much left. And we'll see if we can make do with that. I do have quite a bit of other goodies in there, so, you know, I love my greens, though. Got, got to get those in. So that's my big pile of kale with the stems removed and very finely chopped. I think I have about two and a half, maybe three cups of packed kale there. So let's just call it a cup per salad. And there's all my goodies. So we've got lunch for three days right there. Or call it hurricane preps. So I am wrapping up my Sunday evening meal prepping. I had thought I would just do the salmon, but then it dawned on me, hey, Milton is out there. If we lose power, it's probably going to happen Wednesday, possibly Thursday. Meanwhile, I want to get a bunch of proteins cooked up because that way, if I am without power, even though I'm on the East Coast, I think I'll be okay, but you never know. So if I lose power, I've got plenty of proteins ready to go through Friday. And my salads for at work. So I should be good to go. This is all going in the oven, just gonna bake for 30 minutes and then I am calling Sunday a wrap. Well, the salmon and the chicken are done. And I'm gonna let that cool off then get it into the fridge. It's seven o'clock and I am just done being in the kitchen. I've been doing chores all day. So that's a wrap for my weekend, you guys. Out for a walk this morning. I'm amazed it's not raining. Very thankful that I got a whole walk in. And look at the sunrise. Wow, gorgeous. Surprising to see one with all the clouds out there. Just beautiful. I'm back from my walk and I have this pot out here that I've never put a plant in because there's no hole in the bottom and <laughs> I use it as my rain gauge. I emptied this thing on Sunday and used the rainwater on the patio, on the covered patio. And now look, it is almost full again. So we're going to measure <laughs> and see how much water's in here and I'm gonna dump it into my watering can. So we have had well put that in there backwards. <laughs> Let's call it six and three quarters inches of rain in two days. And the storm is not officially here yet because it's Wednesday, October 9th. So we'll see how much rain we get in the next couple of days. So I had my walk, broomed the pool, checked the chlorine, and now I'm going to whip up some cinnamon rolls. I've never had much luck making bread during hurricanes. I think it's something to do with the barometric pressure. I looked it up and it said, if anything, it will make the yeast rise faster, but I'm gonna give it a go anyway. So this is my favorite cinnamon roll recipe. I'll put a link down below. It's from the Stay at Home Chef. My little Einar Gartner crock for flour here is almost empty. So I'm gonna use this up and refill it. The recipe calls for three cups of flour and I think I might have one and a half, two cups in there. So definitely gonna be busting open a couple more bags of flour, happy to do that. So I'm going to get going on this and just get into my little work from home day. It's going to be a gloomy day, so I've got the lights on in the house. And I'm going to whip up this dough, let it raise, and then I'm going to get into my first cup of coffee in front of my computer. This recipe calls for using a bread mixer. I don't have one, so I'm doing it the old-fashioned way by hand. So I've let my yeast proof. I'm putting in three tablespoons of softened butter, one egg, and a teaspoon of salt. I'm curious to see exactly how much flour 
I have in this tub, or I should say container. So here's one. Oh my goodness, I think I'm going to get to exactly three cups, you guys. That is so fun. My thrill of the day. Yes, exactly three cups. And maybe a tablespoon to spare. <laughs> now I'm going to mix this up and let it raise for an hour. I'm telling you guys, it's little things that give me satisfaction, so putting fresh flour in my little glass jar. So I've got two five pound bags going in here. And that will last me about three or four months. Well, my dough doubled nicely. And I'm gonna roll it out and we'll see how the rolls themselves raise. That's always the real question. I just did a quick run up to Publix. They were closed. Then I zipped a few blocks down the street to see if Walmart and Aldi were open and they are closed, which is surprising because I'm on the east coast of Florida and we barely have any wind. It's not even raining. And I, from the weather channel information, I don't anticipate that we will have any serious weather in my area until sometime, maybe mid-afternoon tomorrow, Thursday. But, you know, better safe than sorry, and I have everything I need. I just had a small little list of BOGOs, toiletries that I was going to snag. No biggie. I have plenty. I don't need a thing. Praise the Lord. But I found it interesting. All of those stores are closed. Gas stations are open. Home Depot is open. That's all I know. I didn't venture out any further than that. <laughs> so on with my cinnamon rolls here. So I'm going to roll out this dough and then I'll spread one stick of melted butter or softened butter on the dough and then I'll be sprinkling this one cup of brown sugar and two tablespoons of cinnamon. for these. In spite of the hurricane weather, it's going to be five days before I'm back at the office. Praise the Lord. All right. So I'm going to cover these with plastic and hope they raise well. Well, guys, I'm no kind of weather girl, but I can tell you the wind has picked up significantly since this morning when I went for my walk. There was just a slight breeze then, and now I'd say it's it's blowing a steady maybe 5 to 10 miles an hour with gusts up to maybe 15 now and then. But we definitely have a constant breeze at this point. I'm very thankful the garbage guys came early this morning. Yeah, just a little garden update because why not? This side is pumpkins. It was going to gangbusters and it's kind of dying off a little bit, I think because it got so heavy, it started bending over this and kind of distressed itself from the weight of it, I think. Also a lot of rain, which is why the leaves are looking so yellow, I think, because I've been putting fertilizer in here every 10 days or so. And of course we've had really high temps, 85 into the low 90s ever since these things started growing. <laughs> but I will say my observation is this is butternut and it's a lot happier when it's allowed to grow on the ground than when I'm trying to corral it in those cages. So I'm just gonna keep winding it back and forth here and hopefully my long guys will avoid hitting it. But I am so excited, you guys. I did manage to get some female flowers and male flowers at the same time on this one and look i'm actually getting a butternut squash it looks like it got fully fertilized because that thing's you know about the length of my hand almost and there was one over here that i also fertilized but yep 
it looks like it's gonna take off too. Woohoo! About, I don't know, three, four inches long there. And another one. Yay! <laughs> Hopefully I could successfully grow at least three. I'd be thrilled. So, more weather updates to come. I'm going back inside, doing some quasi mill prepping just to keep myself busy. I worked so hard at work yesterday to get everything done that I possibly could that today working from home I don't have much to do and I'm making food to keep myself busy and feel productive so my cinnamon rolls are raising nicely I'm gonna give those another hmm, 20 minutes or so and then I'll throw them in the oven and I just had to dig out in the deep freezer and I thought I'd used up my last rotisserie chicken carcass, but if you saw a prior video when I picked up two clearance rotisserie chickens, I'll put a link to that down below if you're interested. Anyway, I had used most of the meat and thrown the carcass in the freezer, both carcasses, and I still have one in there, yay, because I'm in the mood for chicken soup. I thought about making chili because I have everything, but I'm just not in the mood for chili. And it's, you know, October, looking fallish out there, even if the temperature says otherwise. So I'm going to put this carcass on to boil and make that some soup. I think I'll make another round of chicken corn chowder, even though I only have one potato to put in there. I'm just not in the mood for like a chicken veggie soup. Although that would probably be lower calorie and healthier. I'm just, hey, I want comfort food. Kind of creamy soup. Some of my YouTube community has reached out to me already and thank you so much for your love and your concern and your prayers. I just wanted to show everybody where I'm at in relation to this storm. I am over here on the east coast of Florida and may God be with everybody on the west coast. This particular view is as of Wednesday 11 p.m. predictions so they're saying by two o'clock in the afternoon today that yellow part of the circle will be over my area as well as you know everywhere else it's showing so the wind is definitely going to pick up significantly for me but i should be fine 2 13 wednesday afternoon can you hear the rain on the skyline now we've got lightning and thunder bunch of rain. I don't know if you can tell because it's so free. <laughs> but it's coming down pretty hard. I'm guessing an inch an hour right now. Poor Teddy. He's so scared of thunder. It's going to be a rough night for him. I'm going to finish doing some, let's call it meal prep in here for the storm. And I am going to throw these rolls in the oven. They've been raising about an hour and a half which is twice as long as the recipe said, but just now about double in bulk. So those are gonna bake for about 15 minutes. I've got my chicken carcass boiled, and now for the tail end of my meal prepping, if you can call it that, I'll be making frosting for the rolls. I'm going to make a bow tie pasta salad, so I have something in the fridge that doesn't have to be heated up to go with my already cooked chicken that you saw me do on Sunday evening. I have about at least 20 ounces of chicken in there that's cooked. I have about 10 ounces of the salmon I cooked the same night. And I'll just throw some peas in here with this pasta salad, along with some shredded cheddar or some cubed cheddar, and probably some homemade honey mustard dressing. Just keep it simple. Also throw a bunch of the basil in there from my little herb garden. I really need to trim that stuff out there. So I'm going to use a bunch of that up. These ingredients are going to go in the soup along with some of the celery that I sliced up a couple of weekends ago when Gabby and Mike were here. So this has you know, been sliced up about 10 days, but it actually was frozen partially in my refrigerator. So I'm going to put that little bit of celery in my soup, my one little sad potato, <laughs> and whatever chicken comes off the carcass. And then 
I'm gonna throw a bunch of these veggies on a sheet pan. Boy, I caught these zucchinis on the last leg. And peppers, these carrots, this little bit of sweet potatoes. That is the last of the sweet potatoes that I grew last year and harvested in January. And then I'm gonna slice up this Cajun smoked sausage to go on the sheet pan with these veggies. And I'll be ready to go and call it meal prep for the next six, seven days. I also have a couple of salads left in my fridge that I had prepped on Sunday for work and now I'm working from home. And then this is the chicken and the salmon. I already made some bread over the weekend. I've got lots of coffee in my campfire coffee pot. So that's my food plan. My other plan is to work on this purge list because you know, when a storm's coming, it just makes me antsy. I don't know about you all. So I will probably work on purging my laundry room. I've got a lot of stuff out there I need to go through. I'm finished with the living room. I'm not going to attempt the attic or the rest of the garage until probably the end of October-ish because it's just so darn hot out there. For sure, not the attic. Then I've got a lot of purging to do in the kitchen. So yeah. That'll be enough to keep me busy over the next few days if, you know, we're slow with work because we're kind of on an all stop out of respect for everything that's going on in the state. And I've got to keep myself busy with other things. So that's the plan. That's one zucchini. The other one's going in the freezer. I'm gonna put about a third of this box of pasta in here because I'm just cooking for one, so I'm not trying to make a huge bowl of pasta salad. Right, so normally I would make this soup in the crock pot, but with the storm coming, who knows how long I might have power. I think I will. I'm praying we don't lose power. I think it seems like a sure thing on the east side here. But I just want to get these veggies sauteed. And while those are cooking, I will pick what little bit of chicken is on these bones off of there. We all have a favorite pan, and that one's mine. I got it at Aldi last year for 20 bucks. We are getting the first rumblings of rain. A little tiny bit of thunder, much to Teddy's dismay. <laughs> I'm throwing the sheet pan in the oven. And that's going to cook about 35, 40 minutes. Now I'm going to start on my pasta salad and finish up my soup. And I had about a third of a bag of frozen corn in my side-by-side. -side. Yay! So I didn't have to go dig it in the deep freezer. That should be plenty for this little bit of soup. I'm only shooting for maybe three servings of this soup. So I got about one full cup of chicken off of that carcass. I'm going to add broth now and bring it up to a boil. Then... Um, you know, a little cream cheese, salt and pepper, and my soup is done. And now that I've got all my meal prepping done, other than I need to add a little bit of green peas and mayo to my pasta salad and mix that up. I'm gonna start my dishwasher because with all this thunder and lightning and the wind, you never know, my dishwasher's full and I don't wanna have it full of dirty dishes and getting smelly. Plus all my favorite coffee cups are in there. More and more, I'm glad I'm making this chicken corn chowder soup because I'm able to use a couple of these, maybe one, two ounces of cream cheese that I had in the freezer. I'll throw those in the soup. And the lights have blinked twice now in the last 15 minutes. And we are on the early end of things, so we'll see how this goes. All right, so we're on our second tornado warning in the past hour. I'm still alive. I'm really glad I used the cream cheese in this recipe instead of whole whipping cream that it calls for because I have about three-fourths a carton of cream and that's it. And I think all the stores will be closed for sure through tomorrow, possibly even Friday, depending on the weather. And 
those, I'm going to call it three ounces total of cream cheese. And it's not quite melted all the way, but close. Those made this very creamy. And I'm going to let this just simmer for about 10 minutes. And then I'll add maybe half a package of these mashed potatoes to thicken it up a little bit and taste it for salt and pepper. <laughs> Meanwhile, let's call it veggie with sausage. Sheet pan is done. I have never had this Cajun sausage before from Hillshire and that is really good. Better than the plain. The plain doesn't have enough flavor in my opinion. So now it's on to finishing up the pasta salad. And then I've got to whip up this frosting. The thunder and lightning finally calmed down. So hopefully I can get the frosting made before the power goes out. Cause I want to use the electric mixer. I decided to get with it and make the frosting before I finish the pasta salad because I don't need power for the pasta salad. Oh yeah, cinnamon rolls. And I think my frosting turned out perfect. Still have power. All the things to be thankful for at this moment. My family and friends texting me, checking in. I worked late yesterday. I mean, I worked as hard and as fast as I could to get absolutely every single thing done that I could. And I'm so glad I did because I can relax and enjoy my day. Everybody has shut down. I am not going to have any work coming in. If I lose power, I won't be able to work. And there were several critical things. I am so glad I was able to cross off my list yesterday and feel like it's all good. Now on to frosting these rolls. Then I'm gonna have some soup and the leftover half a sandwich from my birthday lunch the office put on for me yesterday. Oh yeah, can't wait to have one of these with my coffee and then all of my laundry done. And I realized, oh geez, I better get my wreath off the front door. I just bought that thing at TJ Maxx with some birthday money last weekend while Gabby was here. It's Martha Stewart, I love that thing. I like it on that door, I might leave it there. I'm going to move my little Dollar Tree pumpkin wreath out from under there, though. More use it ups to finish up this pasta salad. I've had this eight ounce block of this Vermont sharp cheddar cheese in my fridge for way too long. I'm not sure when that thing expired, but it's still good. I'm going to use about half of that in my pasta salad. I'm going to use up about half of this half a bag of peas. And then for my soup, I have these little stragglers of bacon that I've had in my meat bits and bites bin. So I'll get those used up. And I'm so glad that I bought a big bag of this shredded cheddar cheese a couple of weeks ago because I was completely out of yellow cheese. I was down to just white in my fridge. So I'm gonna whip up the dressing and this meal prep will be done. One more weather check because you have to come out on the patio to get some basil. It's about 3.30. The patio is very wet. We'll see how long my little pre-curbside console table holds up out here. Yeah, I'm gonna snag some of this basil. It really needs a haircut. So I'm gonna go for this giant branch right here. Good. Mother nature. She's gone crazy. It's official. And then after I got my salad mixed up, it dawned on me, why is that not as colorful as I thought it'd be? And I realized I forgot to put in my sun-dried tomatoes. So I'm gonna cut up about a fourth a cup of those and they're going in. Okay, that's more colorful. Okay, so this dressing is a honey mustard. It is two tablespoons of mayo a heaping tablespoon of honey Dijon, about one and a half tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, and a couple tablespoons of olive oil, a little salt and pepper. I'm gonna give it a taste test. Mm, I like that. Very 
right, so I have about a half a cup of the basil in there. And my dressing's going in. I'm gonna give this a stir. You guys, the flavor of this soup is ridiculously good. I can't even get over it. Mm, 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 mm. Now I wanted the consistency to be closer to a chowder. So I added that whole packet of potatoes, especially since I only had one little scruffy potato that I put in there. So man, I am surprised how good that turned out given I was kind of hodgepodge in it. Well, here's my lunch slash dinner. It's 4.15, so this is all I'm gonna need for the day. We're ready to rumble on the food. And the wine. Praise the Lord. Onward. All the laundry's done. I'm keeping all the electronics on plug-in chargers until the power goes out. Hopefully that won't happen. But just in case, I'll be ready. Ellie checked herself in when it started thunder and lightning a little bit ago. She was winding all around my feet. I think she knew a bad storm was coming. I'm 99% certain Teddy is hiding under the bed and Katie's hiding in Danny's closet. Stay safe, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. I'll see y'all on the next one.